All right, welcome back. You know about inputs, you know about markers, you know about timers. The only one you're missing is counters, and it's pretty easy. Uh, so let's start learning about counters. Just like before, let's just fire up PicoSoft uh, and go from there. If you've got something else open, you can go ahead and save it. Uh, I think I've got a uh, motion room lights, um, but you can go ahead and make a new one. Same as always, just drag one over. Let's go into the circuit diagram. All right, so we're gonna build this one up kind of like one piece at a time. Uh, no fancy examples for this one. Counters are easy. Um, so let's go ahead and let's drag over an eye uh, and let's have it go to a counter relay. So your first ever counter relay, ooh. And then our counter relay, just like before, it's gonna control something. Uh, let's have it control a marker. You could have done a marker or an output, didn't matter. Let's click on the counter and let's see what some of the options are. So the first of the options are you can use a count pulse, a count direction, or a reset. The one that you care about most is count pulse. Uh, what I will say about a counter, and a surprisingly common error, is a counter, what it does is it counts how many items have come through, um, and then when you hit a set point, it does something different, right? So in this case, um, you're going to create a set point of five. So what it does is it counts pulses, right? So it counts uh, rising edges of I1 in this case. As soon as it sees five of them, then it comes on. Um, and so once it's on, it's gonna control marker one. So let's go into the simulation. Uh, I'm gonna make sure all my eyes are just normally open momentaries. We're nice to you in that we try to teach you one thing at a time. Eventually we will combine all these skills together. Um, and that's when it'll get a little harder, but that's okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch the counter itself. And I'm gonna go into my inputs uh, and I'm gonna hit play. And if I hit I1, uh, you can see that not a lot happens on the screen except for the value has incremented uh, to one here. If I hit it a second time uh, and then a third time, going nice and slow because PicoSoft likes nice and slow clicks four not too exciting here it comes wait for it woohoo five um so when you go to five um it makes that counter relay go into the made state um when it's in the made state it's going to allow current to flow through its rung and turn on marker one you can keep clicking um and the actual value will just get higher and higher and higher right um so really the set point is um is my count value equal to this number or greater. That's that's really what it's asking you. Um, so obviously you would like to be able to reset it. Uh, so let's go ahead and go to the circuit diagram and let's add a rung here. I'm going to right click. I'm going to say add a rung. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to be sneaky. Uh, I'm going to make I3, yeah I know, uh, controlling a counter. I'm not going to have two things that are counting, right? So actually, I want to make I3 be a reset. Um, so this is, to be honest, this is what I care about the most. I care about um, having a counter, like the normal pulse counter, um, some way to reset it, um, and then that counter controlling something, right? So let's go ahead and do the simulation area here. And let's go ahead and view counters again. And so now if I hit play, I can click one, two, three, four, five. My counter is on. And then if I hit I3, uh, it'll reset it to zero. Obviously, you could hit it earlier, too. So now I'm at two. And I click I3 to reset. It resets it there as well. To be honest, this is the only skill you truly need in the lab um, is the ability to make a counter and a reset. Um, if we go look at the notes, just to kind of get them caught up, um, we've also got a timing chart here. Um, I mean, the timing chart is gonna be so easy, I can hardly hardly stand it, right? Um, so the timing chart, go ahead and fill it out, right? I won't even wait for you to finish. Um, so this is just the marker is low, and then boom, that's when it turns on high, and then when you have an I3, which is a reset, it goes low there, right? So counter's pretty straightforward. Uh, these are the only true skills that you have to know about them for lab. Just because they're so easy, I'm going to teach you a couple other things real quick. Like, 
So back to the circuit diagram. Um, you may have noticed, and I'm going to add another rung here. Um, you may have noticed that I did not use I2. So I'm going to have I2 controlling a counter as well. There is one more type of counter. So there's pulse, there's reset. There's also a thing called direction. Um, so you can see that it gets a nice D in it for direction. Um, this is to let you change between counting up and counting down. So I'm going to go back into my simulation. I'm going to make I2 be a, a position just so it'll stay there. And what I want to do is I just want to show you um, the ability to change your counting direction. Guess what it does? I bet you can't possibly guess. So if I hit I1 right now, it counts up. Three, four, five. I can even go over. If I wanted to, I could switch the direction so I can hit I2. Now I'm going to be going the other direction. Uh, so now when I hit I1, it's going to be counting down. So there it's five, four, three, two, one. You can see that once I got below the, uh, the threshold, it went off. And you can also reset it, which just snaps it to zero. So direction just lets you set whether you're counting up or counting down. One more practical use of it. All right, last little thing. Um, I'm going to add another rung here. Um, you could actually make it be like a single pulse. Let's say that you've got things coming down the assembly line, um, and then all of a sudden you have one that's a reject, right? So you, you boot him out, um, and you don't want to count that one anymore. What you could do is you could kind of combine these guys, um, and so you could make like a button. So now I2, we're going to make it momentary. Um, we'll just make a button that just, just does like a subtract one, right? So here you can see with this demo, so I've got I1, it's just going to be doing a normal count. I2, I2 in this example is going to be back to a momentary. So I2 is going to be like a count down. I1 is going to be like a count up. It's not like it, it is it. All right, so if I was to watch this guy and hit play, um, if I hit I1, it goes up to one. I1 again, two, I1 again, three, I2, it counts down. So you can see it's very temporary, right? Like it sets the direction to be negative, um, it then does the count, um, and then that's it, right? So it goes down to one, um, and then it goes up to, say, five. Uh, once you're all the way up to five, uh, of course, the counter comes on, like it becomes made, and it turns on um, whoever he's controlling. Um, and if you were to hit I2, it would go down to four, it's kind of a way you can kind of quickly come back. And then, of course, I3 does a complete reset. So they're really not that hard, right? I mean, there's everything you need to know about counters. Um, so you can check yourself off and say, I understand counters. That's it. Simple topic, simple lecture. Um, the neat thing about this is that's the last type you have to learn in PicoSoft. Uh, so now you know about... Uh, inputs, and P was a type of input. You know about markers, and Q is technically a type of marker as well. Uh, then we did timers, uh, and then last but not least, we've done uh, counters, so you've got all the basic types. All right, that's it. See you next time.